All right, guys, today we're going to be walking you through everything that we would have wanted to know when we first started using our robo drill with the Fanuc 31i V5 control. All of the 31 series and other recent Fanuc controls should be very similar to operate, so this should be applicable to most newer machines with Fanuc controls. Starting with power up and homing, hit this on button to turn the machine on. All right, first power up boots to this quick and see menu, which we'll go into a little bit later. For now, press the quick and see button here to get out of that to the main screen. Release the emergency stop and hit reset. In this mode, the door will be open, indicated by this green light. So in order to do anything, we'll have to open that and reshut it. So now the door is locked. We haven't found homing on startup to be necessary for accuracy, but here is how it's done if you need to. Press the reference point button under the manual mode control and then hold each of the jog buttons with the origin symbol on it until its light goes green. Which will be very slow depending on where you're at. All right, the machine is now referenced. I'll show how to change tools using the MDI mode. That also won't change if your feed rate override is set to zero. MDI tool change. If you want to enter a specific tool pocket number, you have to go to MDI program and then enter M6 for a tool change and your tool number that you want. End of lock, insert or input will work and cycle start. Loading programs. Our machine does not have the networking option, so choices are to load files from either the USB or the DNC remote memory option. USB requires the following list of button pushes, so we heavily prefer the DNC option. If you don't want to change from where your current input output setting is, enable parameter write. One, turn it on. You'll need to go into offset settings, edit mode and hit e-stop. Reset, go back to our offset settings and change this IO channel from four to DNC to 17 for USB, and then go back, turn off your parameter right, reset the emergency stop and reset the machine. So it's now set up to read from USB, which the port for that is right there. Uh, put it back to DNC, because that's what we're gonna use. E-stop, reset, offsets, parameter right, edit mode, reset, back to there. Change IO channel back to four. Input. Turn the parameter right back off. Reset the machine. Now back in DNC mode, we take the compact flash card, insert it into this adapter, and all that is needed to run file from that. On your first startup, you'll have to go remote program folder operate device change m card dnc and then refresh that list it'll show you all of your programs that are on that dnc card and in order to set that file press dnc set in this case 1001 program is the dnc to, uh, program that you have selected you can take the card out change that 1001 file put it back in and hit remote program cycle start and it'll run right away from your new program as long as the name stays the same while running programs from this mode, I highly recommend going remote program check all to see all of your actual positions and especially your distance to go. One unintuitive thing we found was opening the door. Um, you have to press one of these buttons under the manual mode. I usually go handle, door, we'll open the door. Um, the door does not open at the end of programs, which is pretty annoying. I think that there's a way to change that in your keep relays, but we weren't able to get it working. Also, the handle jog speed changes depending on whether the door is open, uh, which is an easy way to break Heimer tips if you aren't cognizant of this. Work coordinate offsets. Our robo drill didn't come with probing, so we use a Heimer and our Spironi optical tool presetter to set work coordinate and tool length offsets. Heimer lengths and tool lengths can also be measured with an inexpensive tool setting gauge like this one. First, on the Spironi, we measure the Heimer's length using a 3D printed tool to load the tip to the right Z height. I set this value to tool 14 or a higher unused pocket number for reference use only. Position the Heimer where you want to probe using the hand wheel jog. Then go to your desired work coordinate system in offsets. It does not matter which axis you have selected as long as you are under the right system. For Z input 
Z, followed by your Heimer length with no space, and press measure. For X and Y, if you're measuring right on center with those, all you need to do is X0 measure and Y0 measure. Tool lengths are measured similarly to the Heimer length and manually input into the tool length offset table in the appropriate tool pocket position. Something I really like about this control is the feed rate override when set to zero also acts as a feed hold and a tool changer hold. So this is a quick way if you just roll it down, you can, while proving out programs, quick way to snap it down to zero if you need to. This is the recommended machinist stance for first run proving out. Uh, left hand on the feed hold, right hand on the feed rate override knob, and on, on each tool change, bump the feed rate override down to zero and sneak into the cut from there while monitoring your distance to go. For our robo drill, the preload tool post processor property needs to be set to no because this tool changer is incapable of preloading tools. The default Fusion robo drill post has this set to yes. Took a little while to figure out why the machine wasn't running with that setting. Uh, didn't give a very clear alarm. So that needs to be set to no. On the NYCCNC page for this video, you'll see a download link for our robo drill post that has this default set to no, as well as an added post property to control the enclosure washdown on and off at the beginning of a program. Another quirky thing to turn the interior light on and off, we have to go into that quick and see, press this soft button and right there, your flood coolant, it's called flood coolant, but it's really the washdown control is here. And other handy things, there's, there's some quick little operations here. Tool change, uh, I never use that, but you can do one input, will take you to a tool change where you want to go for changing tools that way. Back. We can do things like restrict rotation, a great idea if you're using a Heimer regularly in a certain pocket. This allows you to set max RPM and whether or not that tool is blocked from rotating. Now under this machine operate button, we can go to a power save mode, which will, after a certain amount of time will turn off your interior light and more importantly, the spindle nose air purge. If you don't have this turned on, it'll sit here all day and waste air if the machine isn't run. So I highly recommend turning that on. All right, that's all. Hopefully this will get you up and running on your new Fanic Control machine. Thanks for watching.